So in this video, I'm going to set out uh, how you would implement uh, Delta Hedging and um, also just introduce the relevance of Delta Hedging. Uh, I use the approach suggested by John C. Hull in his book, Option Futures Other, Other Derivatives. Uh, John C. Hull motivates uh, Delta Hedging with a specific example how does a broker, how does an option broker hedge a, an option position? So if we had sold 100,000 call options, um, how would a, a trader hedge his option position, the short option position? Now, uh, delta hedging is important. Uh, first of all, it's uh, from a market practitioner's perspective, it is a technique that's used by uh, traders to head options but it's also important in terms of the theoretical framework for understanding uh, risk neutral conditions um, uh, for option theory uh, big insights uh, economic insights um, provided by Black Scholes in their seminal paper in 1973 was that an option could be hedged and up to that time it was generally viewed that options were toxic and there was no established framework for hedging. Um, what Black Scholes introduced and subsequently why uh, Robert Merton and Myron Scholes uh, won the Nobel Prize was related to this setting out of risk neutral conditions. So. From a practitioner's perspective, delta hedging is interesting, but also from a theoretical perspective. So what's involved? Okay, so we could take um, the following type of example. An option trader uh, has sold 100,000 call options. We could think of the option trader as having a position like this. We could ignore for a moment perhaps this. Uh, so an option trader has a short position. The option, obviously, after a year has uh, passed, uh, the trader runs the risk that the underlying stock price could increase. So you have this downside risk. So if the option, if the underlying stock went to 200, then the value of the short position would be 100, where the exercise is also 100. If the stock price went to 150, trader would stand to lose 50 on the short position and um, so that's a that's an issue for the trader one possibility here is and it might be uh, although a simple uh, solution would be to go long a call an equivalent call option if you're short a call how do you hedge the short call position you just go long an equivalent call option and so the gate the losses on one position would exactly offset would be exactly offset by the gains in the other. So if you're taking a loss in the short position, then the long call position would exactly offset that. But that to some degree is a little bit self defeating and of course if you're selling something to buy it would seem strange unless of course you could sell for a higher price than what you can buy. Okay, and that may be possible, and that in fact may be I mean, options trade in markets where there's bid offer. So some players have more pricing powers than other market participants, and yes, that can happen. But uh, it's uh, in trying to establish risk neutral conditions, maybe uh, not ideal, okay, as motivational. So if we went back to our initial position, short call, how else might that be hedged? Uh, John C. Hull uh, proposes uh, a few different op um, strategies. One possibility would be do nothing, just take the risk as it is. Alternatively, you could buy 100,000 shares. So if that were the case, and we went back into uh, the short position again how the strategy might work is if you had bought 100,000 stock 
Uh, so if, let's say you had sold 100,000 IBM or Apple stock, uh, sorry, Apple options, call options on Apple, you could buy 100,000 Apple stocks. If the stock, pr if the stock price went up, you would be losing in the call, but you would gain in the stock and that would offset the option position. However, uh, the difficulty here would be what if the stock price fell and then you're taking a loss on the long stock position. One way of resolving that is to make the strategy, don't set up a static strategy and uh, implement a kind of hedge and forget, but actually set up a more dynamic type of structure, a stop loss type structure, where perhaps you set out a decision rule if the stock goes in excess of 101, you buy up 100,000 stock. If the stock price goes below, uh, perhaps an arbitrary number like 99, then you sell out. So you don't have this loss. So in a stop loss dynamic type strategy, you change the amount of underlying asset in your portfolio in a very kind of dramatic way as the stock price increases above some benchmark like 101 you buy up you're fully hedged against losses on the short call position as the stock price falls you sell out so you don't bear the losses as the stock price continues to fall the downside with this strategy is it's a buy high sell low type strategy and if we took that those arbitrary numbers that buy at 101 sell out at 99 if the stock price went through a loop of 101 and back to 99 that represents a loss of two on each stock and if you have a hundred thousand stock that's a loss of two hundred thousand if the stock did that loop over the uh, one year if the contract had a one-year maturity if the call option had a life of one year then uh, you could envisage a situation where the stock moved around 100 above and below maybe four or five times and in fact your losses then become very significant and um, so uh, obviously uh, the static strategy is probably unsatisfactory the naked position is also leaves you exposed to a substantial amount of risk uh, we could implement a stop loss but that also involves buying at a high price selling at a low price it also might be destabilizing because you have to make large market interventions where you're fully buying up 100,000 selling, selling out 100,000 stock at a given point in time that may move the stock price more dramatically uh, as a result um, so th these type of strategies uh, uh, tend to to have uh, problems one possibility uh, is and even if we didn't uh, weren't familiar with delta hedging is to have some kind of more incremental type of gradual change in the stock position uh, delta hedging tends to uh, uh, set out a framework where you make small market interventions uh, much smaller than the stop loss strategy proposed uh, here um, what the delta hedging elaborates is basically if you had sold let's say you had sold 100,000 call options then you would take a long position a buying position in the stock but the amount that you would buy would be defined by delta and delta here is the change in the call with respect to the change in the stock in other words it is the slope tangent if we could identify the stock price and the value of the call associated with that uh, stock price uh, and identify where in the black shoals parabola at that point was the intersection at that point we could then in turn set out a slope or if you like a sensitivity to what degree does the call change with respect uh, to change in the value of the stock the black shoals framework provides us with an actual 
a mathematical formula for finding that value. So e negative qt n d1 is um, can be estimated numerically, sorry, estimated analytically or estimated uh, computationally. So we could set out, we could estimate this as a slope, but we could also make reference back to Black Scholes. So in the in the framework that we develop here, we'll estimate delta. This measure here is e neg qt. Um, um, also in my playlists, uh, I do set out a computational, computational and an analytical estimation for delta and show the two are equivalent and if you go into my playlist for um, option greeks and you come here to the option greeks delta one delta two and um, that's precisely what i set out where i show that the analytical and computational estimates of um of delta actually uh, can be shown to converge so we use e negative qt in a in a black shoals framework that involves working out this value e negative qt nd1 uh, we worked it out the value of the call we worked out here the value of the delta to see what's behind the code we could go into the vba editor come down to delta for a call and it's clear delta c that function delta is e negative qt and d1 so um how do we then uh, use delta well delta is a dynamic strategy uh, dyna delta involves taking an initial position of if we sold 100,000 call options the delta hedging framework would immediately imply that we would buy e negative qt times the stock so in this instance if delta was found to be uh, 0 0.63 the initial amount of stock that i would buy would be equivalent to the delta multiplied by the 100,000 call options we had sold and that would be 63,000 so we could imagine that uh, in in setting out this type of framework if we had sold 100,000 call options the initial uh, hedge we would create would be to buy 63,683 stock if the stock price had been lower if the stock price had been 90 then delta would have been lower if the stock price had been higher with respect to the exercise then we would have had to buy more stock so if we take that delta hedging framework if we took that delta hedging framework right where we had sold a particular amount of call then the to replicate for the replicating portfolio to be implemented we must buy we, we take delta as offering the signal in terms of how much stock should be purchased so the delta c dc over ds here is equivalent to the black shoals e negative qt nd1 and if the stock price had been initially 100 if the stock price had been initially 100 then delta would have been the initial amount of stock we should have bought was 63,000 if the stock price had been lower delta would have been less the offsetting position on the stock would have been to buy 42,000 stock if the stock price had been higher at 110 the initial position we should stake out in terms of the underlying stock would have been to purchase 79,000 stock later we'll see how this delta is influenced by uh, the time changing so that'll be the next uh, couple of videos